Corporation Law Final Examination, Reviewer 1. What is a close corporation? Answer A close corporation, within the meaning of this code, is one whose Articles of Incorporation provides that, a. All the corporations issued stock of all classes, exclusive of treasury shares, shall be held of record by not more than a specified number of persons, not exceeding 20, b. All the issued stock of all classes shall be subject to one or more specified restrictions on transfer permitted by this title and, c. The corporation shall not list in any stock exchange or make any public offering of its stocks of any class. Notwithstanding the foregoing, a corporation shall not be deemed a closed corporation when at least two-thirds of its voting stock or voting rights is owned or controlled by another corporation which is not a closed corporation within the meaning of this code. The provisions of this title shall primarily govern closed corporations, provided, that other titles shall primarily govern closed corporations, provided, that other titles in this code shall apply solito early, except as otherwise provided under this title. Section 95, Revised Corporation Code Note, not a close corporation when two-third of the voting stock, rights is owned or controlled by another corporation which is not a close corporation. b. What are the kinds of businesses that cannot qualify as a close corporation? Answer. Any corporation may be incorporated as a close corporation, except mining or royal companies stock exchanges, banks, insurance companies, public utilities, educational institutions and corporations declared to be vested with public interest in accordance with the provisions of this code. 2. What is a non-stock corporation and what are the purposes for its creation? Answer: Non-stock corporation, is one where no part of its income is distributable as dividends to its members, trustees, or officers. Any profit incidental to its operations shall be used for the furtherance of the purposes for which the corporation was organized. b. Difference between stock and non-stock? Answer. The difference are the following. As to income, in stock corporation, the income is distributable as dividends to its shareholders while in non-stock no such income is distributed. As to its purpose, stock corporation is organized for the purpose of earning profit, on the other hand, non-stock corporations may be formed or organized for charitable, religious, educational, professional, cultural, fraternal, literary, scientific, social, civic service, or similar purposes. C. Is the membership in a non-stock corporation transferable as a general rule? What is the exception? Answer. As a general rule, the membership in a non-stock corporation is non-transferable since one's membership is based on personal qualifications determined by the bylaws of the corporation unless the Articles of Incorporation or bylaws allows otherwise. 3. Can a close corporation conduct business continuously for a period of five years without having a single meeting of the board of directors? Justify your answer. 10 Pines Answer, Yes Section 100 of Revised Corporation Code provides When a board meeting is unnecessary or improperly held Unless the bylaws provide otherwise, any action taken by the directors of a close corporation without a meeting called properly and with did notice shall nevertheless be deemed valid if A before or after such action is taken, a written consent thereto is signed by all the directors or, b. All the stockholders have actual or implied knowledge of the action and make no prompt objection in writing or, c. The directors are accustomed to take informal action with the express or implied acquiescence of all the stockholders or, d. All the directors have express or implied knowledge of the action in question and none of them makes prompt objection in writing. 4. A. What is a corporation sole as a religious corporation? Answer, 
A corporation soul is a special form of corporation usually associated with clergy. Conceived and introduced into the common law by sheer necessity. B. What are the requirements when a corporation soul disposes, sells, or mortgages its properties? 5 Pints Answer, Section 111 Acquisition and Alienation of Property A corporation soul may purchase and hold real estate and personal property for each church, charitable, benevolent, or educational purposes, and may receive bequests or gifts for such purposes. Such corporation may sell or mortgage real property held by it by obtaining an order for that purpose from the regional trial court of the province where the property is situated upon proof that the notice of the application for leave to sell or mortgage has been made through publication or is directed by the court, and that it is in the interest of the corporation that leave to sell or mortgage be granted. The application for leave to sell or mortgage must be made by petition, duly verified, by the chief archbishop bishop, priest, minister, rabbi, or presiding elder acting as corporation soul, and may be opposed by any member of the religious denomination, sect or church represented by the corporation soul, provided, that in cases where the rules, regulations, and discipline of the religious denomination, set or church, religious society, or cult are concerned represented by such corporation soul regulate the method of acquiring, holding, selling, and mortgaging real estate and personal property, such rules, regulations and discipline shall govern, and the intervention of the courts shall not be necessary. 5. A. What is a one-person corporation? Answer. One-person corporation is one with a single stockholder provided that only a natural person, trust, or an estate may form a one-person corporation. B. Is a one-person corporation required to submit its articles and bylaws to the SEC? Answer, yes, for purposes of registration, one-person corporation need to file their articles of incorporation with the Security of Exchange Commission as provided for under Section 14 of the Revised Corporation Code. However, unlike ordinary corporations, one-person corporation, by its very nature, does not need to have its corporate bylaws. 6. A. Genovex Corporation, a one person corporation owned by Jet Li, appointed himself as the treasurer, and his wife as corporate secretary. Is this legal? Answer Yes. One person corporation shall appoint a treasurer, corporate secretary, and other officers as it may deem necessary and notify the commission thereof within five days from appointment. In this case Jet Li appointed his wife as corporate secretary which is not the prohibited under the revised corporation code. Prohibition is that the single stockholder may not be appointed as the corporate secretary which is not attendant in this case. b. Is the concept of limited liability in an ordinary stock corporation applicable to that of a one-person corporation? Discuss. Answer, yes. Section 130 of Revised Corporation Code provides. Liability of single shareholder. A sole shareholder claiming limited liability has the burden of affirmatively showing that the corporation was adequately financed. Where the single stockholder cannot prove that the property of the one-person corporation is independent of the stockholder's personal property. The stockholder shall be jointly and severally liable for the debts and other liabilities of the one-person corporation. The principles of piercing the corporate veil applies with equal force to one-person corporations as with other corporations. 7. A. Define a foreign corporation, FC. Answer. Foreign corporation is one formed, organized, or existing under laws other than those of the Philippines and whose laws allow Filipino citizens and corporations to do business in its own country or state. b. Can a FC not doing business in the Phil. Sue here in the Phil. On an isolated transaction? 
explain. Answer, no section 150. Doing business without a license. No foreign corporation transacting business in the Philippines without a license, or its successor or assigns, shall be permitted to maintain or intervene in any action, suit or proceeding in any court or administrative agency of the Philippines but such corporation may be sued or proceeded against before the Philippine courts or administrative tribunals on any valid cause of action recognized under Philippine laws. 8. Daimler AMG a corporation registered in Germany, made a 30% investment in Katz Motors Fills, a domestic corporation appointed by Daimler AMG as the sole distributor and service provider for Mercedes-Benz cars in the Philippines. Is Daimler Chrysler considered to be doing business in the Philippines? Justify 10 Pines Answer, no Daimler AMG is not doing business in the Philippines. As provided in the Section 1, Paragraph F of Implementing Rules and Regulations of RA 7042. Doing business shall include soliciting orders, service contracts, opening offices, whether liaison offices or branches appointing representatives or distributors, operating under full control of the foreign corporation, domiciled in the Philippines or who in any calendar year stay in the country for a period or periods totaling 180 days or more participating in the management, supervision or control of any domestic business, firm, entity or corporation in the Philippines and any other act or acts that imply a continuity of commercial dealings or arrangements, and contemplate to that extent the performance of acts or works or the exercise of some of the functions normally incident to and in progressive prosecution of commercial gain or of the purpose and object of the business organization. The following acts shall not be deemed doing business in the Philippines. 1. Mere investment as a shareholder by a foreign entity in domestic corporations duly registered to do business, and or the exercise of rights as such investor. 2. Having a nominee director or officer to represent its interests in such corporation. 3. Appointing a representative or distributor domiciled in the Philippines which transacts business in the representative's or distributor's own name and account. 4. The publication of a general advertisement through any print or broadcast media. 5. Maintaining a stock of goods in the Philippines solely for the purpose of having the same processed by another entity in the Philippines. 6. Consignment by a foreign entity of equipment with a local company to be used in the processing of products for export. 7. Collecting information in the Philippines and 8. Performing services auxiliary to an existing isolated contract of sale which are not on a continuing basis. Such as installing in the Philippines machinery it has manufactured or exported to the Philippines, servicing the same training domestic workers to operate it, and similar incidental services. 9. La Chemise Lacoste Company, a French registered garment maker not registered in the Phil, filed a damage suit against Bois I. Lacoste Corporation, a domestic corporation, for trademark and trade name infringement in the RTC. Will the suit prosper in the context of legal standing and cause of action? Justify and discuss. 10 Pines Answer, yes. As early as 1927, this court was, and it still is, of the view that a foreign corporation not doing business in the Philippines needs no license to sue before Philippine courts for infringement of trademark and unfair competition. La Chemise Lacoste vs. Fernandez, 1994 10. Discuss the procedures, steps in voluntary dissolution where creditors are affected. 10 Pines Answer, Section 135 Voluntary dissolution where creditors are affected procedure and contents of petition. Where the dissolution of a corporation may prejudice the rights of any creditor a verified petition for dissolution shall be filed with the Commission. The petition shall be signed by a majority of the corporation's board of directors or trustees, verified by its president or secretary or one of its director or trustees, 
and shall set forth all claims and demands against it, and that its dissolution was resolved upon by the affirmative vote of the stockholders representing at least two-thirds, two-thirds, of the outstanding capital stock or at least two-thirds, two-thirds, of the member at a meeting of its stockholder or members called for that purpose. The petition shall likewise state, a, the reason for the dissolution, b, the form, manner, and time when the notices were given and, c, the date, place and time of the meeting in which vote was made. The corporation shall submit to the commission the following, 1, a copy of the resolution authorizing the dissolution, certified by a majority of the board of directors or trustees and countersigned by the secretary of the corporation and, 2, a list of all its creditors. If the petition is sufficient in form and substance, the Commission shall by an order reciting the purpose of the petition, fix a deadline for filing objections to the petition which date shall not be less than 30, 30, days nor more than 60, 60, days after the entry of the order. Before such date, a copy of the order shall be published at least one week for three, three, consecutive weeks in a newspaper of general circulation published in the municipality or city where the principal office of the corporation is situated, or if there be no such newspaper, then in a newspaper of general circulation in the Philippines, and a similar copy shall be posted for three, three, consecutive weeks in three, three, public places in such municipality or city. Upon five, five day's notice given after the date on which the right to file objections as fixed in the order has expired, the Commission shall proceed to hear the petition and try any issue raised in the objections filed and if no such objection is sufficient, and the material allegations of the petition are true, it shall render judgment dissolving the corporation and directing such disposition of its assets as justice requires, and may appoint a receiver to collect such assets and pay the debts of the corporation. The dissolution shall take effect only upon the issuance by the Commission of a Certificate of Dissolution. 11. What is the right of appraisal of a stockholder? What are the instances when such right can be exercised? Answer. Appraisal right is the right of a descending stockholder to demand appraisal and payment of the fair value of his stocks from the corporate. It allows a stockholder who dissents and votes against a proposed corporate action to withdraw from the corporation by demanding payment of the fair value of his shares. Shareholders typically invoke their appraisal rights when their company is being acquired or merged and they believe the price being offered is too low. Appraisal right refers to the right of any shareholder to demand the payment of his shares in fair value in the instance that there is an amendment to the Articles of Incorporation or when the corporate existence is extended or shortened, or when there is a sale, lease or exchange of all or substantially all of the corporate assets, or when the corporation invests its funds in another corporation or business for a secondary purpose, or when the corporation shall merge or consolidate with another corporation.